Okay, so there are a few things that we need to understand before we move on to arrangement. First of all, um, we talked in the last class about um, that equivalence principle should hold locally. Um, let's talk again talk about that experiment. Well, if there is earth and we have two balls, we let them fall, they're going to fall like this. So, um, um, they, so locally, the, these falls should be parallel. But let's say we ignore the first ball and we ignore, by, by ignore I mean let's not record but these two balls but a different ball which is dropped these two balls and it's dropped like this. Okay and we can move on to the third ball and do like this. So in principle locally these two are parallel, these two are parallel, these two are parallel. But as you can see, actually, it it follows a curvature. Um, as a matter of fact, just to make it more quantitative, let's discuss what's really going on. So, if there is a curved path and there's a vector, and let's draw using a different color. This is the vector. Now what we do is we draw a parallel vector which is parallel to this guy and it's the same length. It's difficult to draw but I'll try my best. Uh -huh. Okay, here it is. Not really very parallel but let's say. And similarly, we draw another which is parallel like this and we keep moving and we somewhere reach here like this so, and by making subsequent parallel vectors. <coughs> and now the final vector is not going to be the parallel is not going to be parallel to the initial one. And um, 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 and so and this whole phenomenon of going from here, to n is called parallel transport. Okay. Now, if you have, let's say, if you choose two different paths, So you have this is your initial path, this is your final path, and you parallel transport the same vector along these two paths. Then the end of choosing this path and these paths are going to be different, which basically means these two paths are curved. Uh, that's why they're different. But if instead you have two straight lines and you parallel transport these guys then we know the initial vector is going to end as the same final vectors. So the curvature actually changes it depends on the path uh, so the, so um, cur if the curvature, curvature is present then choosing different paths actually uh, makes the vector look different than uh, the, the end of let me rephrase if curvature is present then the final vectors are not the same for the same initial vector okay so um, this is really the starting of understanding how curvature works now this is a two dimensional problem uh, in three dimensional problem um, if you have let's say a sphere
looks like my sphere doesn't close but anyway and you can have actually um, a curve on the surface of the sphere and if you parallel transport a vector you will see that when it comes back it's not same as the original vector so the curvature actually tell uh, because of curvature uh, the um, has actually it gives you um, a phase difference from the initial position as a matter of fact this, uh, the phase difference is the same as the solid angle produced by the area at the center of the um, sphere um, so uh, this is curved and it can be curved extrinsically and intrinsically which basically means it's exter externally it looks curved and intrinsically is also curved because if let's say you take two vectors which are parallel at the equator and you parallel transport them you will see at the pole they are not going to be parallel so the two the, the vectors lose their they, they don't they don't remain parallel anymore as they reach the pole um, but if you have a case of cylinder this extrinsically it's curved but intrinsically two parallel lines will remain parallel if you parallel transport them. Uh, so you have this kind and you parallel transport it along uh, two paths and it's going to be parallel. So you can choose one path like this or you can choose other path like this and if you parallel transport it then here and here they are still going to be parallel. So this is intrinsically, I am sorry for the bad drawing, intrinsically this is not curved. You can always open a cylinder and make it a flat space, a flat, make it flat. Now to really make things quantitative, let's talk about few things and we begin with covariant derivative. Some formal things needs to be discussed, a covariant difference derivation or actually derivative, derivative. Um, this is defined as del vector v over del x beta. Um, well, parallel transport is something like this. Let's say the path is lambda, this is sort of uh, parameterized by lambda. Then we know dv over d lambda is 0 because you see we are the two vectors are parallel locally d lambda. So, if you change your lambda a little where lambda is something that tells you how the path is how the path is is parameterizing the path then with a small change in lambda the vector remains parallel and d lambda is 0 the first order effect is 0 and this can be written as del v over del x b d x b over d lambda and this should be 0. So, that is why we are interested in this and I am not going to derive this, but this depends on the coordinate systems that have been chosen which means these these x b's are the coordinate systems here. Well, actually I should have written e b because um, well, I, the xp actually these are the oh let me I'm think I'm getting confused here v r yes these are the actually um, these are so a, a unit vector will be written as x b e b that is a vector so a small vector d r let's say some vector is going to be d r beta e beta okay i hope this is clear now so this is del r is nothing but del x is nothing but this part here okay so what is del v 
over del xp well this is given as we can do uh, actually write this as um, v alpha e alpha over del x beta and do differentiation by parts and we'll get del v alpha over del x beta e alpha plus v alpha del e alpha over del x beta and this depends on the chosen coordinate system this is going to be alpha beta e mu and these are called Christoffel symbols which depends on the chosen coordinate systems okay um, for example for polar let's say the example of two-dimensional polar coordinates this is R and this is theta okay del e r over del r is zero because if you change a small make a small change dr you're you're still moving in the radial direction and that's why um, your um, you are not really changing er but del e r over del theta is not zero I can I don't really remember what it is but you can see if you change your theta by a little let me exaggerate it your a theta is also change uh, your er is also going to change this is the new er now similarly del e theta over del theta is also not zero because as you change theta, your a theta will change. As a matter of fact, it's in the er direction. As you can see, e theta initially is in this direction. If you change theta, it becomes in this direction. The change is in the er direction. So something in the er direction. And similarly, the fourth one, which I think will be del a theta over del r, you can figure out how it looks like. Um, and these values which I have not written are, are the Christoffel coefficients, uh, Christoffel symbols. I don't remember, so I haven't written. Uh, so um, you see here, uh, E mu is E r, and what I have not written is Christoffel symbol. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Um, so as you can see metric which we already have seen depends on the the chosen um, coordinate system as well as these new symbols also depend on chosen um, coordinate system um, as a matter of fact there's a relation between these guys which is written as something like this This is a handy formula one can memorize, but it's not really that important to memorize. Okay. Um, as you can see, this is um, third rank tensor compared to G, which is a second rank tensor. Okay, we'll talk about geodesic in the next class to um, really see how this works. Uh, but for now, the main idea was to include in, introduce parallel transport that how we pa parallel transport a vector. If we parallel transport it around a curve, uh, then um, if it doesn't match with itself, that means the, the system is curved. But the space-time curvature, the space-time is curved. 
Um, moreover, um, covariant, we talked about covariant derivatives which show how a vector changes if you make a small change in one of the axis um, variables which means something like this. What are these guys? Del E alpha over. So we, we, we talked about this guy. Okay. Well, actually, I'm sorry. This, uh, yes, that's fine. No, 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 no. This is third rank tensor, yes. And we know that this is nothing but. Okay. All right. We'll talk more.